Try to call you, Mr. Freak. Yo, who's this? This is Officer Vasquez with the 9th Precinct. Officer Vasquez? What the Vic do now? Mr. Freak, there's been an accident. Look, we're gonna need you to come down to the following address as soon as possible. What kind of accident? Put Vic on the phone. I can't do that, sir. No, 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 you're not hearing me. I want to talk to Vic. Look, sir, we need you to come down as soon as you can. No, 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 hey, hey, hey listen, listen, on? listen, listen, listen. Oh, Put down the phone, and I don't want to hear it get picked up until Victor Van Leer is on the phone. the phone. Put Vic on the phone. Mr. Freak, Mr. Van Leer was killed in a car accident. What's going on? Give me the phone. The car he no. was driving was registered to you. We were able no. to identify him from the Listen flyers. Listen to me. Session. Freak, I don't want to talk to you no more. Freak, give me the phone. <sighs> hi, excuse me. Hi. Yes. This is Cece. This is Freak's manager. Who am I speaking with? Hi. Yes. Look, we're going to need somebody to come down and identify Mr. Van Leer. Eyewitnesses say that he was involved in a car chase. Two cars were chasing him, and as the chase escalated, he eventually lost control and crashed. Look, I'm, I'm really sorry for your loss. Hello. Outside of the deceased, was anybody else injured? Vic died in a car accident. Vic died in a car accident. What? Yeah, they said he was in a car chase. Please, no. Freak, I'm sorry. <laughs> He died. Oh, man. I'm, I'm so sorry, Freak. Freak, I am so sorry. Sis, I started here. Yep, right here in the dome. Yeah, and I was all about living the dream. Yeah. I know it'd be some nightmares. As Daddy always says, all that glitters ain't gold. Yeah, I'm gonna miss my brother Vic, though. Deep down, he was a good person at heart, but he was never quite right. Something was always off with him, yeah. even when we were little growing up. Yeah, I know, I know, but I loved him anyway. I knew he was trying to take advantage of our friendship, but I didn't care. We were boys, ride or die, you know that? Ride or die. Just hope Vic finally found peace and death that he never found in life. Well, may he rest in power. <laughs> when you really sit down and think about it, life is but the length of a blink of an eye. And that's so quick. We spend a third sleeping in bed, a third trying to figure this thing called life out. <laughs> Yo, by the time we think you got it all figured out, you only got a third of your life left. Yeah, life's a trip. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Life's a trip. Ten times ten. Well, honey. <laughs> hey, yo, shout out to my man, Vic. <laughs> shout out to Vic. <laughs> Come on, let's bounce. All right. Yeah, I'm about to wake up the project like I used you to. Better better <laughs> you better not. You better not. We ain't kids no more. Cece? Cece. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Why are you sneaking up on us? Hey, we thought you two left town yesterday oh, after the funeral. <laughs> We decided to stay one more day. Oh, I'm so glad you did. I wish we had known you were coming. We would have made you something to eat. Oh, yes. OK. <laughs> what y'all doing? Yeah, hey, chatting. Yeah, talking about yesterday's service. Oh, OK. How you holding up, son? You know what? I'm OK, Pops. But you know what? We love you two so much. And it's only now that I'm realizing how much you two sacrificed for Cece and myself. Hey, you know Vic didn't really get to know his father growing up. We were lucky to grow up in a household with two loving parents. Uh, and you know what's sad to say? Like people thought we had a highly unusual home in a project. Yeah, folks always talk about the negative effects of boys with no father in a home, but it affects girls too. And it's helped me in my relationships with men in my life. What men? Anywho, I know that all men are not dogs because I had a great father in the home. You, Daddy. I was there too. 
He didn't do it alone now. Right. <laughs> yes, mama, of course. It <laughs> goes without saying. Thank you, daughter. I did what my father did, and his father, and his father before that. A man, a real man, will always be involved in his children's lives. I love your mother. We had our ups and downs, but I love her more than life itself. You two are a direct result of that true love. Yeah, we know that. Switching subjects. Yeah. I know the both of you like I know the back of my hand. You said you were leaving after the service. Why are you here out of the blue? Yeah, oh. what's up? Why gotta be all that? Yeah, we can't stop by and show our love and appreciation for right. our loving parents. Oh. I'm highly offended. I am appalled. Uh, what's happening? Yeah, come clean. <sighs> okay, okay. Me and Cece just want to give you a little present. Yeah, a small token, a small repayment for everything you've done for yeah, us. Yeah, all the sacrifices you've made. And we want nothing in return but your love mm -hmm. and grandchildren. Uh, but get married first. <laughs> yeah, save your money. But, Daddy, we really just... But, want Daddy, nothing. You heard your father. Well, maybe, maybe one, one day. day. <laughs> maybe. But one day is not today. Nope. <laughs> OK. Well, for real, for real, we do have an actual flight to catch tonight. For real, this time. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. for real, this time. <laughs> well, it's so, good to see you again. Uh, love you, yes, love you hey, too. Hey, y'all call us when you get there, okay? Well, we as soon as you yeah. land. Love love you. Okay, mama. All right. Yeah, y'all okay, call mama. us as soon as you get back. All right, as soon as you land. All right, yes, promise, promise. Take care of your brother. Of course, always. I got this. Don't trust. <laughs> wow. Hey, did you forget something? Uh, no, can you do me a favor and head to the sofa? The sofa? Well, what's at the sofa? Just look behind the cushion. Behind the cushion? Uh, Pete, come here. But they won't now. What's in the envelope? Just look inside, Mama. Pete, you open it. Hey, Frequency, what's this? Does it look like it opens doors? Keys to a house? Uh-huh. A new home? Uh-huh. Son, now I didn't told you and your sister a million times. Me and your mother mm -hmm. are very comfortable yes, right where we are. Yes, he's absolutely right. This yeah. is Harlem, USA. Project or no project, this is our apartment. This is the home we made for you to raise you up right in. We're not moving like everybody mm -hmm. else. Let me talk to Tell him something. Frequency, we both appreciate it very much. I mean, we, we're very uh, grateful. Uh, okay, can, look, there's something else in the envelope. He, he says look inside the envelope. What? Well, look inside. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey. Montego Bay, Jamaica. <gasps> Baby, pack your bags. We are living the dream. <laughs> oh. Thank y'all. Love you. All right. Love you guys. Love you. Dear Freak, <laughs> by the time you read this letter, I'll be long gone. I wrote this letter because it's the only way I think my voice will ever be heard. This piece of yellow paper it's the only way I'll ever get any of you to stop, listen, and really get to know me, Victor Van Leer. My childhood was turbulent, but even in the most unsettling times, there was a break in the tide. My father was the rocky water, and my mom's was the gentle surf. Pops did a lot of foolish stuff, but when he wasn't trashed and was actually taking the time to be a father, he'd say, Vic, you got one life, a fragile life. God can take this life whenever he sees fit. So live and live plentifully. Each day God gives, live it in abundance. My pops was a smart dude, the most dangerous kind, educated and street smart. And this apple didn't fall too far from the tree. My mom's, yo, she was an angel. No matter how heavy the hand, she would do anything for me. And by chance, when I was casted into that darkness, she was the voice I followed back to the light. I was so young, too young. But my decaying flesh carries the scars and memories that won't fade. She's the reason I'm as loving as I was. She taught me to look at others as human beings and not objects. Now, whether it's pain, a simple kiss, hug, or I love you, could disperse that rainy day. 
That's why I'll, that's why I'll never understand. Why? Why? Why she of all people was taken from me. The only one good thing I ever had in my life. And that was my mother. You ever feel lonely? Well, I didn't have any siblings. And no one would claim me as their own. It is the first time in my life I even... I question the point of living at all. If it wasn't for your family taking me in, I swear I was going to open my wrist or jump in front of the A train. But I found love. And I found it through my new family. Mr. P, man, he was the complete opposite of who my dad was. He was foreign to me. He was a good, honorable man, and to be honest, he intimidated me. I didn't believe I could ever be the man he tried teaching me to be. Miss Martha, damn. <laughs> Real talk, I was in love with that woman. Freak, if you're reading this right now, I'm sorry. I never met one hottie that came close to her. Mr. Peter's a lucky dude. But unlike my dad, he could recognize the angel in his presence. Aside from my own mom, she's the only other person I truly think understood me. I just wanted to be loved, yo. I just wanted to belong. CC. Man, I've seen her make the hardest dudes break at the wrist. I've seen her turn coal into diamonds and then back into coal again, just by doing this intense stare she do. CC is no joke. I love her, though. We used to be close. And again, I'm sorry, freak, but when your sister get all mad and on one, damn, I just... Whew. <laughs> CC. I love you more than you will ever know. I hope in my time past you can finally forgive me. Yvette is beautiful. A woman about success, work ethic, and never settling for less. Which, that's why I didn't stand a chance. Freak was king, and me, a big, fat zero. She was cool, though. Chill. And wish she wasn't being all uptight, that girl was mad funny. I could see why you fell in love with her. She could make any man better. She was exactly what I wanted, and definitely what you needed. Frequency vibrations. My boy, my blood. I'm sorry I couldn't be as great as you. I'm sorry I was your weight and not your pedestal. I wanted to be a lot of things. I thought I was the next prodigy. Then you hit that court, and I knew. It was it. It was you, freak. It was you. I didn't have much of a life, at least not one I could be proud of. I never said this to you, but I wanted to be you. All I wanted was a taste, just a little taste of everything I never had. Can you blame me? Like my dad said, life is short, and I just wanted to live it abundantly. I know it hurts, but your life would be better without me. There's nothing holding you down anymore, freak. I believe in you. And I always look out for you from above, B. Hey, bring that Jesus piece back for your boy, though, you know. That shuttle's working. I love you, freak. At least I did something right. At the end, I felt as though I had no place here anymore. I never felt as though I belonged. Maybe, maybe my greatness is in the heavens. Or 
maybe, just maybe, our greatness is you, Freak. I just hope you and the fam remember me as I remember my mom. Look at people like human beings, not objects. Because if you wait, it's often too late. So just say you love them now, man. Be the voice they can follow out of darkness. Be to them what my mother was to me. An angel. Boy, resting in power, Vic.